Well, there's no doubt about it. Tasmania has plenty to offer. Plenty. And one of Tassie's finest exports is also one of its <laughs> most famous faces. So Princess Mary of Denmark hails from the Apple Isle, of course, and still thinks of it as her home. When a beach just From humble Hobart beginnings to the palaces of Europe's oldest kingdom, it's hard not to look at Princess Mary's life and think of it as a modern day fairy tale. Girl meets guy in a Sydney pub, guy turns out to be a prince. They get married, have kids and prepare for life as king and queen of Denmark. Hans Christian Andersen, eat your heart out. If people want to refer to it as a fairy tale then... That's fine by us as well. Mary Donaldson has come a long way from her early days at Taruna High School and the people here in Tassie have been with her every step of the way. From the moment she wed Crown Prince Frederick in 2004... He's done pretty well this, and she seems nice. ...to their frequent trips home. The couple and their four children are always welcomed back with open arms. Mary! Mary! The 43-year-old returns regularly to catch up with her family escape the cameras and enjoy the great outdoors. I cannot recall wishing that one day I would be a princess. I wished I would be a vet. <laughs> a lover of horses in particular, the crown princess is no stranger to the riding clubs here and is also passionate about yachting and golf, two of Tasmania's principal pastimes. Down to earth and graceful, the people of Denmark have truly taken to Mary, but she'll always have a special place in the hearts of those right here in Tasmania. And joining us now to discuss Tasmania's very own royal, we're joined now by Alison Andrews, who covered Mary's wedding when she was a journalist with The Examiner. Good morning to you. Good morning. She's an extraordinary lesson in someone who didn't know anything about royalty mm. to becoming possibly one of the best examples of grace and intelligence and advocacy and a great mum as well and, and they're clearly still very much in love those two. Absolutely, I think that's what appealed to people about Mary right from the beginning because she was very natural, she's just herself and she's still herself uh, and she's smart and intelligent and she's taken on the Danish culture amazingly. There's yes. a perception there that, um, that she may have given up too much to, to be in the life that she is now in um, to sacrifice too much of herself but you, you, what you're saying is that she's still very much herself within the confines and the order of, of what she's doing. Yes I think so and, and given too that Danish uh, royalty is very different to um, most of the royalties around the world mm. they're very laid back the Danish people are very laid back yeah. anyway and the the Danish royalty are part of the community so Queen Margaret goes riding on her push bike down to get smokes from the local shop and, and it's, it's that kind of royalty. <laughs> That's very Aussie. It's, it's not what we know yeah. uh, and I think that Mary's fitted in very well to that and she chose to do that. She made a considered decision. Yeah. And there, there was quite the lead up. There was about three or four years between famously meeting him in yes. that pub in Sydney during the Olympics. Fred was, was yes. how she knew him to be. It was only after he'd left the pub, apparently, mm. that somebody said, do you know who that was that mm. you were just talking exactly. to? Mm. But as Carl says, she did give up a lot. She had to give up her Australian citizenship. Mm. She had to change religion. She even had to sign over before the marriage that should there be a divorce, that the children would become the property of Prince Frederick. Well, they would stay in Yeah, in that's Denmark. a big call. Yes, yes. Uh, as you said, uh, they're very much in love and, and I think that uh, Tasmanians and Danish are very alike and I think the culture is similar and, and I think that over time she's found that it sits very well with what she knows here and they've also maintained really close links to Tasmania so they're backwards and forwards well, all the time, the family's still here. Well let's yep. face it, I mean she's brought a little bit of class hasn't she to the Danish royal family? Yes. I mean they were rabble before she came along. <laughs> yes and scented them too, I think. rabble, I don't know whether I'd go for rabble, but she and, scented them. And look yeah. at Frederick there, I mean didn't every Australian woman fall in love with Fred when he cried as she walked down the aisle. Well, even a crusty old journalist, you know, yeah. when, the, when he teared up. Yes, exactly. It's every, it's, it's every young girl's dream come true, isn't it, Lisa, to, to you know, pick up your life in Australia and go and marry a prince somewhere? Look, I think, I think what everyone hopes for is to find someone who's going to really add to their life and, yes. and 
care for them just as you care for them and, and that's clearly what's happened here but it's it's lovely also to see her with the role that she's taking outside of the country with advocacy yes. um, she's got quite a few charities that she's he heavily involved with and you can't help thinking that Catherine <coughs> Princess Kate um, whatever the, the latest terminology is for her has taken some of her cues from the way that, that she, Mary made that transition from so-called commoner to royalty. Yes, I think you're right. And they're very much alike, aren't they? Can I say that? That's not yes. blessed for me, is it? No, they are. But they're very much I alike. pictures of Mary and I yes. think, oh, that's Kate. That's oh, no, right. Kate, that's Mary. Mm. And I think Mary has a natural style about her and I, I think she's probably got a, um, a lot to teach with that. She's a very natural style and uh, she's smart and she's done her homework and she's doing a good job. And when she's back here, um, and of course Hobart is her home, many of her family is still back here, her sisters certainly. Yes. She always goes down to Salamanca Markets, yeah. puts on the flats, pair of jeans, mm. you've got to love that. Absolutely, and then probably goes to the shack afterwards. There you go, Carl. There's, there's something to put on your list for next time. Do you know what? Do, do you send a pies? Because, I mean, I've had three of these pies already. I think you probably sure. should send somebody some pies, Carl. <laughs> not her? She'd probably not. She'd, she'd, she'd love a pie. She'd probably say thank you very much, but no thanks today. Well, I, well I don't think she's forgotten Tasmania in any way, shape or form. Clearly not. So she'd, I reckon this is, she'd love this more than anything else in the world. I'm going to have another one. Okay.